you. I'll pause. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to worship. In this most unusual time, we are recording our worship so that it can be uh, participated in at home. You can share it with your friends and neighbors, and we urge you to do that so that we all will have the advantage of worshiping together. Though we are not here in the sanctuary, we are the body of Christ, and so we urge you to participate in any way that you can. If you have any announcements that you'd like to share with the congregation, please email those to the office or call the church phone number so we can get those out in the newsletter so that all may know what is happening in the community of Jesus. Now we will participate in the call to worship. I will do the leader's part, and if all of you watching the video, wherever you are, join in on the people's part. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Sweet. 
Today's scripture lesson is taken from the book of John, chapter 11, verse 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard this, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you were going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am not going there to, awa to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had not been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she sent and met him, him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came in with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, 
Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When, Jesus, when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, who had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And now for children's time. Jesus brings Lazarus back to life. John 11, 1 through 44. One day, Lazarus got very sick. Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus asking him to come heal their brother. Even though Jesus loved his three friends, he waited two days to start the trip to see them, and Lazarus died before Jesus got there. Martha and Mary said, If you had come earlier, our brother wouldn't have died. Jesus was so sad, he cried. Then he went to the tomb of Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come out. And out came Lazarus, wrapped in the burial clothes. He was alive and well. Sometimes when we ask Jesus for something, we have to wait. Sometimes for a long time. Let us now pray together. O oh Lord, in times that are unsettled, in times when we have questions and fears, we know that we can look to you as our Lord and Savior, the author and finisher of our faith. Calm us in those uncertain times. Give us your assurance. Help us to use the intelligence that you have given to us and reach out and help to others wherever we can. We want to be your people, O oh God, and so calm our fears. Give us your strength and help us to always walk by the light and example of Christ, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, everyone. Greg Calvo again. And so, you know, last week I talked about push pay and our ability to give through the church website and so, you know, it, we're talking about technology and websites and, and getting it out. And we had over 300 hits uh, on the YouTube video. So that was fantastic. Thanks, everyone. That's, that's great. And also, one of the members of our youth got a little bit excited. And so uh, she quickly made a quick video. Let's take a quick look at it.
Okay, great. So the point is giving can be fun and it can be easy, especially it's just so easy to go through the website. So I know I talked about it last week, but just want to show it again. So if you go to our website, which by the way is, and Trish, next slide please, camumc.org. And next slide please. Right in the middle of the web page then is the Donate Now with PushPay and you just select that and it'll take you right through the steps step by step very easy the first time you give you will have to put in your bank information which by the way is just right off of your check you can use the information from the check the routing number and the account number and once that's done literally it takes seconds to give through push pay and one last way that we can give through uh, push pay is through text messaging if you don't feel like logging on to the website another way is to text message the number 77977 then in the subject matter of the text you just spell out Camdenton UMC and that takes you directly into push pay and it is exactly uh, as easy as if you had gone through the website it's just that it's another way and that you can do that you can access the push pay portal through text messaging so if there's any question at all at any time my cell phone and I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna share it with everyone my cell phone is on 24 7 I know everyone out there has our church directory you may call me on my cell phone at any time and I sincerely mean that so as long as it's about push pay so then uh, thank you everyone and uh, we'll see you soon stay safe okay with me Lord how we need you at all times and especially now so as we consider together your word to us I ask that in the next few moments the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight O Lord our rock and our Redeemer amen as I was reading this scripture during the week in preparation for today's worship time and as Greg read it to us a few moments ago one of the things that 
touched me or that struck me about this particular message was the idea of favorites. All of us have favorites. A person, a place, a thing. I know on my computer whenever I open up the browser there is a list that I can go to that is favorites. Things that I look at from time to time whether it is a recipe for open door cafe or a piece of music or chord charts or whatever it might be I can just click on that one line and it'll take me directly to that because that thing is something that is a favorite to me favorites needs almost no definition it's something that we all know about it's something that is common to every one of us and the scripture today made me think of favorites. I remember one time several years ago when I asked the congregation to name something that was a favorite of theirs. We had answers from across a wide spectrum. Quiet time in the morning, the sunrise or the sunset, time spent with a friend was one avenue of thought. Other people named favorite Bible verses, one that was contained in our scripture reading this morning, I am the resurrection and the life. Others named favorite songs or hymns, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, it is well with my soul, victory in Jesus. While others had responses that centered around favorite people, Kids and grandkids were especially prevalent in that. What makes something a favorite? I think it has a lot to do with how it makes us feel and the memories that it evokes. When someone is thinking about the sunrise, a person went on and later explained to me that it made them feel the love of God that has that gives us the, the gift of God's brilliant and warming love at all times. Another said what they mean to us, as in our kids, our grandkids, our favorite individuals. Others said the way they inspire us, the way they stir our souls with those messages that have come to us from the past, that have moved us in our own lifetimes, and that give us hope and assurance, especially in difficult times. One of the difficulty with favorites, though, is that if something is named as a favorite, that means that everything else comes behind that or is lower than that. You can't have a favorite without having those that are a little least favored. We can't have favorites in the world without thinking of other things a little less. One of the verses that was favorite in our scripture reading this morning, I am the resurrection and the life, stands out as a centerpiece of hope. But does that mean then that all of the other verses rank lesser than that? With all of that in mind, why then did this scripture this morning make me think of favorites? Well, one of the reasons was that it contains a verse that was my favorite as a child. If you go to John 11.35 and read that in the King James Version, the verse says simply, Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. And whenever it came to scripture memorization time, that's the one that I picked, because I knew that would be very easy to remember. After that, other verses, however, have become favorites to me, especially John 11:25. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. There are different reasons, though, for now that shortest verse in the Bible being one of my favorites, Jesus wept. One of them is that it indicates the humanity of Jesus. He was moved by the death of his friend. Also by the great grief that was displayed by the people who were surrounding the tomb. He felt sorrow for those who loved Lazarus. And what that says to me is that in our times of sorrow, 
In our times of suffering and grief, Jesus stands with us. He knows our feeling. He cares for us. And he grieves right along beside us. But I think that there are other dimensions to the meaning of that short verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. One of the things I think is that it very well could have been tears of joy and anticipation. Jesus knew what the immediate future was going to bring. He knew that he was about to raise Lazarus to new life and to newness of living. And so his tears were those of knowing something wonderful was about to happen that would be shared with all of the people. But I think he also had sadness for another reason. Sadness for those who did not know God. For those who weren't aware that they could put their full reliance upon the goodness and the providence of the Lord Almighty. Those who were unaware that Jesus was, as he says, the resurrection and the life. And there is yet another reason why this scripture brought thoughts of favorites. The first thought was that it might be that Lazarus was Jesus' most special friend. The scriptures indicate that he had a special bond with Lazarus. Jesus was moved to tears, both by the passing of Lazarus and the people's reaction. And then he raised Lazarus from the dead. But consider that other verse that Jesus spoke to the people that day. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Jesus wasn't trying to tell the people that Lazarus is the only one to whom this is going to happen. But whoever, everyone, all people everywhere who trust in Christ have the hope of the resurrection and the promise of life eternal. And so that's why this verse speaks to me of favorites. Let me share a story with you. A little girl was talking with her teacher one day, and the teacher asked her who of the three children were her mother's favorite. And immediately she responded, it's my sister because she's the oldest. And then without missing a beat, she said, my brother is her favorite because he's the only boy. And then she ended with, and I'm her favorite, because I'm the smartest. Indeed, she was. She was the smartest because she knew that mother favored each one of them, not over any of the others, but each of them were her favorites. What that in this morning's scripture says to me is that we are all favorites of God. We are not left behind or left out or devalued or dismissed. But God loves you as much as God loves everyone. Christ who loved Lazarus, who stood with Lazarus as his time of greatest need, that same Christ loves and stands with you. And Christ who raised Lazarus from the dead is ready to raise you. To raise you from those hopes that have been shattered. Those dreams that have been broken. To raise you from the doubt and uncertainty of these unsettled times. And to give you hope and assurance. That's why this scripture spoke to me of favorites. That is the message that Christ gives to us. That we are the favorite one of God. That is the message that each of us can take into the world, that God loves each and every one of us, and God stands with us all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, wherever you are, let's join in our final hymn.
Thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience on this day. We pray God's blessing upon you. Ask that the Lord would give you favor and strength and help you to know that you are a favorite of God. God is with us as we go out this week to be the people of God. Amen.